The Hidden Dangers Why Biosafety Matters to You Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are diving into a topic that's more crucial than ever, especially in our rapidly advancing world. It sounds technical, maybe even a little boring, right? But trust me, Understanding biosafety isn't just for scientists, it's vital for everyone's protection, yours, mine, and the planet's. From new diseases emerging to incredible breakthroughs in genetic engineering, the stakes are higher than ever. So, what exactly are biosafety issues, and why should you care? Let's find out. At its core, Biosafety is all about the policies, procedures, and principles put in place to protect us, the human population, and our environment from potential harm. Think of it as a comprehensive shield against dangerous agents, chemicals, toxins, and even radiation. Imagine a world where labs worked without rules, where dangerous substances were handled carelessly. Scary, right? That's precisely what biosafety aims to prevent. With the incredible strides we are making in genetic engineering and biotechnology, these measures have become incredibly important for ensuring public security and safety. It's so critical that 167 countries around the world adopted something called the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. This agreement focuses on two major things. Ensuring the safe movement of living modified organisms across borders. Developing and sharing methods for assessing risks through something called the Biosafety Clearing House. It's all about global cooperation for global safety. The significance. You might be thinking, okay, sounds important, but is it that significant? The answer is a resounding yes. Genetic engineering is a powerful tool. It's giving us new medicines, more resilient crops, and incredible scientific insights. But like any powerful tool, it comes with responsibilities. Two major concerns that have rapidly risen to the forefront are bioterrorism and biosecurity. We are talking about the deliberate misuse of biological agents and the measures to prevent such acts. It's a sobering thought, but one we absolutely must address to protect our future. Researchers, Administrators, environmentalists, and even policymakers are increasingly aware of these issues and are working hard to implement safeguards. Biosafety levels. So, how do labs manage these risks? They follow strict biosafety levels, or BSLs. These are sets of biocontainment precautions designed to protect laboratory personnel, the surrounding community, and the environment. They're ranked from 1 to 4, based on the danger posed by the organisms being researched. Let's break them down. Biosafety Level 1 – This is the lowest level. Think of it as your standard university biology lab. They work with agents that pose minimal threat to lab workers and the environment. There's no isolation required, and research is carried out with basic precautions like Wearing gowns, gloves, and lab coats. No smoking, eating, or drinking. Safe handling of sharps. Wash your hands frequently. And of course, biohazard signs were needed. Biosafety Level 2 This level deals with agents that can cause human diseases, but usually not severe ones, and treatments are available. 
think HIV or certain types of encephalitis. Lab personnel need to be careful about accidental exposures like cuts or ingestions. Practices here include Use protective equipment like glasses, face shields, and goggles. Infection-causing procedures only taking place in biological safety cabinets, these are specialized enclosed workspaces. Ready access to sinks and eyewashes. Decontaminating waste before disposal. Biosafety Level 3. Now we are talking about serious stuff. BSL-3 labs handle pathogenic microbes that, if inhaled, can cause severe and potentially lethal diseases. Examples include the West Nile virus, yellow fever virus, or the bacteria causing tuberculosis. The requirements here are much stricter. Researchers must wear respirators. You have to walk through to self-closing doors to access the lab. All experiments are performed in proper biosafety cabinets, sealed for maximum containment. These levels aren't just arbitrary rules, they are meticulously designed to prevent dangerous pathogens from escaping the lab and harming anyone. Biopiracy, a different kind of theft. Now, shifting gears slightly, there's another crucial ethical and legal issue related to biological resources, biopiracy. This isn't about lab accidents, it's about the commercial exploitation of genetic materials or biochemicals that occur naturally, often without permission or fair compensation to the indigenous communities or countries from which they originated. Think about traditional knowledge passed down through generations, knowledge about medicinal plants, unique food crops, or sustainable farming practices. These are essential components for the survival of indigenous and rural populations, representing centuries of observation and innovation. Unfortunately, there have been many cases of biopiracy. Remember the African super sweet berries? Their sweetness was exploited without benefiting the African communities who knew about them. Or the infamous patenting of neem, Ajadirachta indica, a tree with incredible medicinal properties long used in India. And the enola bean, a yellow bean variety patented in the US, despite its origins in Mexico. Even the rosy periwinkle, a plant vital for cancer treatment, has been subject to biopiracy concerns. Biopiracy isn't just about economic injustice, it's about respecting the intellectual and cultural heritage of communities worldwide. So, from the highly controlled environments of BSL-4 labs to the ethical battle against biopiracy, the world of biosafety is vast and incredibly important. It's about protecting human health, safeguarding our environment, and ensuring that scientific advancements benefit everyone fairly and responsibly.